Uh, good morning. <clears throat> uh, thank you for the introduction, and thanks uh, for the invitation uh, to give this uh, talk. Uh, the lecture is about uh, spin optics, uh, spin symmetry breaking in uh, nanostructures, and uh, I am from a nano-optics uh, laboratory, Technion. Uh, my colleagues are a uh, part of my uh, group members, uh, Dr. Vladimir Kleiner, Nir Shitrit, Nir Dan, Avi, Yuri, Kobe, Igor, Itai, and uh, Sergei. We know that the spin is a type of intrinsic angular momentum of uh, particles, intrinsic degree of uh, freedom, and in general, isotropic and homogeneous systems are spin degenerated. If we would like to manipulate a physical system by use of the spin as a degree of freedom, we must remove the spin degeneracy. It is possible to remove it in the energy domain, Zeeman effect, or in the momentum domain, which is a Rashba effect. There are many spin-based effects in physics, like in Zeeman effect, Stern Gerlach in solid state is a spinal effect, and Magnus in fluidics. In addition to charge, electrons possess intrinsic angular momentum, which is the spin. And in 1971, Diakonov and Pearl published a very important paper about a spinal effect, applying electric field upon a semiconductor. It results in a spin current in the transverse direction, which is a spin-dependent momentum a shift or spin-dependent deflection of the spin-polarized electrons. A Cato et al. observed it experimentally upon a gallium arsenide substrate. <clears throat> so the spin all effect provides a method of separating electron with spin, spin up and down. The spin all effect is attributed to the spin orbit interaction of electrons, or the spatial trajectory of moving electrons is affected by their intrinsic angular momentum. Another very important effect is the rush by effect, uh, which is the signature of structural inversion asymmetry present in quantum wells. Uh, forming a inversion asymmetry a quantum wells results in a gradient of potential in the z direction. We can write the Schrodinger equation for the electrons or the Rashba effect by using the corrected Hamiltonian term proportional to the spin operator and to the gradient of potential. The solution for this equation is a spin-dependent splitting of the electron dispersion, and uh, we can write the spin-dependent momentum shift, delta K, proportional to the spin and to the gradient of potential. Uh, Zaka et al. Et al. Uh, published an uh, important paper uh, by calculating and, uh, and uh, observat observating a spin split dispersion uh, uh, for electron uh, for the, uh, this uh, Rashba effect. So, spintronics, uh, which is a new emerging area of technology exploiting the uh, uh, spin orbit interaction effects like a Rashba effect or a spin all effect and uh, in which both the spin and charge of electron are manipulated to create a new type of microelectronic devices. In optics, uh, we define intrinsic and extrinsic momentum. Intrinsic momentum is a spin angular momentum, spin up associated with a right circular polarized light and spin down with a left one. Extrinsic momentum is a linear momentum or an orbital angular momentum associated with a spiral phase where uh, the orbital angular momentum 
per photon normalized by H bar is equal to the topological charge. Allen, Allen uh, published an important paper about calculating the total optical angular momentum in the paraxial regime, which is equal to the intrinsic angular momentum, the spin, plus the orbital angular momentum, which is the topological charge. So, <clears throat> in optics, it is possible to observe a symmetry breaking and to obtain spin orbit interaction to allow spin angular momentum to flow to orbital and or a linear momentum. <clears throat> the spin of photons may provide an additional degree of freedom in nanoscale photonics, leading to a new branch in optics, which we call spin optics. Uh, recently, we observed uh, the spin effect or optical spin effect in a micro scale uh, system by launching a, a left and right circular polarized laser beam into a glass cylinder, and we measured the emerging uh, beam as a function of the incident uh, spin state. We measured opposite deflection for the two uh, spin states. And you can see here our measurement relative shift as a function of number of turns. And there is a very good agreement with our uh, prediction. This is the spin all effect of light described by a Berry phase monopole in momentum space. Uh, Huston and uh, quite uh, published in science a very uh, important and nice a paper about a observation of a non-adiabatic optical spinal effect based on weak measurement. They observed a, a, a spin-dependent deflection of the confined a beam refracted from interface between air and glass. So the spin dependent uh, beam displacement and momentum shift are attributed to optical spin orbit coupling between the intrinsic angular momentum and the trajectory. The optical uh, spin all effect was observed in gradient index media in the micro scale system. We would like to manipulate a, a nanoscale photonic system by use the, of the spin as degree of freedom. And of course, we can't uh, use the uh, gradient index, but we can exploit geometric gradient in the nanoscale. In order to form geometric gradient, gradient we utilize the localized surface plasmons configuration. We know that localized surface, plasmon, localized surface plasmons are non-propagating excitation of conduction electrons of metallic nanostructures a couple to the electromagnetic field. And uh, in order to excite the lo localized surface plasma configuration, we fabricated space variant in nano antennas, as you can see here, results in a geometric gradient in the nanoscale. So uh, I discussed a, li a little bit about optical spin all effect or spin orbit interaction. I would like to talk about spin, op spin optics effect in plasmonic, in the nanoscale, plasmonic aronum bomb effect, uh, to talk about spin dependent plasmonic based on interfering of topological defects, and uh, then to discuss about a uh, optical rush by effect in a spontaneous emission, specifically for a thermal emission, and, and to finish with our recent uh, uh, investigation about spin optical metamaterials. In order to observe the uh, optical spin all effect or spin orbit interaction, we uh, utilize uh, surface uh, waves. Uh, surface waves are evanescent, evanescent waves. It can be a uh, surface plasma polaritons. Uh, which are confined wave uh, due to collective oscillations of the electron in a uh, metal, or surface phonon polaritons, which are the resonance collective lattice vibration in polar uh, crystals. For the visible radiation, uh, we utilized 
is a surface plasma polariton, but for the mid infrared radiation for a thermal emission, we utilize here the surface for non polaritons. Of, po of course, the surface uh, waves are evanescent waves, and in order to couple the evanescent wave into propagating wave, we must satisfy momentum matching, and it is possible to uh, satisfy it by using periodic structure. <clears throat> Uh, first, uh, we studied uh, the optical spin all effect in plasmonic uh, chains. We studied uh, two distinct uh, plasmonic uh, chains. A plasmonic chain consisting of isotropic uh, nano antennas along a curve uh, path. And the second one, plasmonic chain consisting of anisotropic uh, nano antennas with a space variant orientation direction along the path. Uh, we start here with anisotropic uh, a nano antenna a chain. Uh, we realize an anisotropic nano antenna as a rectangular nano apertures uh, upon a very thin a gold uh, layer. And we uh, 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 fabricated a random a nano aperture upon the uh, very thin a gold layer and uh, measured uh, the transmission uh, spectra for the scattering through uh, this uh, uh, device. And as you can see, the scattering uh, polarization uh, follows the short axis of the nano antenna. Then we formed a coupled uh, anisotropic uh, nano antenna in a specific uh, direction. And uh, we observed here that the uh, scattering uh, the the, the uh, polarization of the scattering uh, wave uh, follows the short axis uh, of the nano antenna. Then we fabricated a plasmonic chains consistent of uh, anisotropic uh, nano antennas, uh, where uh, theta is the local orientation uh, of the nano antenna. Uh, we used here a local orientation of nano antenna, which varies linearly as a function of x. Uh, we illuminated this chain with spin up and spin down and measured the K space, the far field uh, of the spin flip component. As you can see here, for illuminating with spin down, we measured a deflection for the spin flip component, but illuminating with spin up, we measured opposite deflection for the spin down. This is a spin all effect. This is a spin orbit interaction of light. And we can uh, uh, define here omega as a spatial rotation rate, which is a gradient of uh, theta. So the spin dependent momentum shift is proportional to the spatial rotation rate of our structure. I would like to talk a little bit about isotropic nano antenna chain. We uh, fabricated isotropic nano antenna as an annular aperture uh, upon a very uh, thin gold uh, layer. And uh, we fabricated here a, a coupled uh, isotropic nano antenna uh, chain uh, onto a straight line. Oh, and we measured a longitudinal mode as well as a transverse uh, mode. Then we fabricated a curved a plasmonic chain consisting of the isotropic nano antenna where uh, the local orientation of the chain theta varies linearly uh, uh, in the x direction. We observed here the same spin orbit interaction, the sp same spin all effect as in our previous experiment, and here uh, uh, the spin-dependent momentum shift uh, is proportional to, to the special rotation rate of the curve structure. Uh, we can understand uh, it as analogy with the uh, angular Doppler effect uh, of rotating by retarder, for example, illuminating a sigma state of light onto a rotating pi retarder uh, results in a, a frequency a shift 
proportional to omega t. Omega t is the rotational rate of the retarder in the time domain. In order to analyze especially rotating nano upper, nano structure, uh, we can think about rotating reference frame attached to the anisotropic a pass. Then, instead of theta as a function of time, we can write theta as a function of the pass, as a function of the xi. And instead of a, a, a Doppler in the frequency domain, we will have here a spin-dependent a deflection or spin-dependent momentum, a shift delta k proportional to omega xi. Omega xi is a gradient uh, of uh, theta, which is the spatial rotation rate of the structure. Integrating it results in the Berry phase, which is a geometric a phase proportional to the theta to the uh, orientation function of the structure. Of course, uh, there is some difference between scattering effect and absorption or emission effect. The difference is a factor two, as you can see here. We can understand it as a general, a, a geometric pancheratna, a very a phase, a, by a traveling upon a Poincare sphere. It can be traveling upon another a Bloch sphere. It results in a geometric phase, where the geometric phase is equal to the half of the solid angle of the traveling upon this uh, sphere. And you can see here the absorption as well as the scattering uh, uh, mechanism, where the geometric phase is uh, spin-dependent and proportional to a uh, theta. Uh, the Helmut equation in non-inertial reference frame rotating uh, uh, with a rate omega uh, is presented here with the additional Coriolis term proportional to omega, where the eigenvectors for this equation are the spin uh, states. We can write this equation as a generalized uh, a momentum uh, where the general momentum k is equal to the unperturbated k plus sigma omega. The dispersion solution for this case is a spin split dispersion, omega as a function of k plus sigma omega. Then we form a closed a plasmonic a chains consisting of isotropic nanoantennas, as well as anisotropic nanoantennas, rotates m fold m times along the uh, chain, and we measure the k space, the far field of the spin flip uh, component, uh, uh, results in a dark uh, spot. Dark spot is a signature for orbital angular momentum, is a signature for a spiral uh, phase, and of course we can analyze it by taking a C as a pass proportional to a phi. Theta is the local orientation of the nano antenna, uh, which is equal to m a phi. So we can calculate the special rotation rate in this k and the spin dependent momentum shift delta k proportional to 1 over r. Integrated it results in a spiral phase where the topological chart or the uh, angular orbital angular momentum per photon is equal to 2m sigma. In order to measure this orbital angular momentum or the topological charge, we interfere at twin closed a plasmonic a chains, as you can see here. And of course, you can see here the a fringes of the interference pattern, and, and there is a dislocations. The number of dislocations here, the force is equal to the topological charge uh, with a good agreement with our prediction. We also uh, observe an uh, optical spinal effect for the surface wave, for the plasmonic uh, wave. In order to do that, we realized a Bragg grating uh, with a defect or resonato uh, inside upon a, a gold uh, layer surrounding by a coupler. Uh, for, uh, to couple the incident beam, the propagating wave, wave into a surface wave. And we measured the surface wave uh, inside the defect, inside the resonator, by using near-field optical 
a microscopy, and we measured both for spin up and for spin down a dark spot, which is a signature in this case for a orbital angular momentum of the surface wave. We calculated the phase of the surface wave to be a helical, to be a spiral phase with a, a opposite helicity for spin up and for spin down. So uh, we can uh, write the field, the surface wave, as a spiral phase where the topological charge is equal to the incident a spin states and multiplied by a Bessel beam. We can understand a, it a, from conservation law. We know that invariance with respect to spatial rotation leads to con, a conservation of the angular momentum. So the angular momentum of the incident beam must be equal to the total angular momentum of the surface wave, but the surface plasmon uh, can have only extrinsic angular momentum, so the orbital angular momentum of the surface wave must be equal in this case to the intrinsic angular momentum of the propagating A wave. <coughs> uh, we would like to, uh, to present here our experiment uh, to a discrim distinguish between the intensity of spin up and spin down. In order to do that, we added a spiral structure, introduced additional spin independent a dynamic phase. In this uh, case, uh, we realize L structure, uh, uh, which is equal to one, a uh, one lambda uh, jump in uh, this uh, spiral uh, phase and we illuminated it with spin up and spin down. For spin up, uh, we observed a dark spot, uh, which is signature for orbital two, and for spin down, uh, we observed a, a bright spot, which is no orbital angular momentum of the surface uh, wave. Uh, we uh, utilize uh, this effect in order to observe the spin-dependent transmission through an annular nano-aperture. We realize a nano-annular aperture upon a gold surrounding by a, a spiral structure. We illuminated it with spin up and spin down and measured the transmission through an isolated nano-aperture. And as you can see here, uh, we measured a extraordinary enhanced transmission for spin down and low transmission for spin up. So we have a spin dependent uh, transmission. In order to demonstrate this effect, we realize a two dimensional nano aperture with a right and left ended spiral structure illuminating with a spin up results in a spin picture. Of course, for spin up, we have here inverse a picture and illuminating with spin up and with spin down, uh, uh, we observe, uh, of course, a uniform uh, intensity uh, uh, in, the, in this uh, picture. We can understand it as the angular selection rule in a light surface uh, plasma scattering uh, process. Uh, the total angular momentum of the incident beam is equal to the intrinsic plus extrinsic if we have. We couple it to the, into the surface wave, so the total orbital angular momentum of the surface wave is equal to the angular momentum of the incident beam plus the angular momentum due to the spiral structure, which is L structure. Of course, we have here annular aperture behaves as a plasmonic a waveguide, and a, we can define a orbital, a orbital angular momentum to the plasmonic a mode, a, a guiding mode. In order to couple the surface wave into the plasmonic a, a guiding mode with high efficiency, we must satisfy the angular momentum selection rule, which is the L surface, 
uh, uh, L of a uh, uh, surface mode must be equal to the L of the guided mode, and we have the angular momentum selection uh, rule. In our case, we realize annular uh, aperture allowed excitation only for L guided mode plus minus one. Uh, we realize L structure, spiral phase, which is equal to two, so we have an angular momentum selection rule. The angular momentum selection rule in this case is satisfied only for a, a, a sigma a minus, and there is a very good agreement with our experiment. Uh, we also uh, observe an optical a spinal effect for a plasmonic a, a lens. Uh, we realized a plasmonic lens, a coupler uh, surrounding by a Bragg a grating, and uh, we illuminate it with spin up and spin down and measure by using a near-field optical microscopy the location of the focal spot of the surface wave. As you can see here, there is a spin-dependent deflection of the focal uh, spot with a very agreement with our uh, prediction. Of course, by illuminating both with spin up and spin down, we observed a dark spot. Actually, we can uh, see it uh, as an optical-like Stern-Gerlach uh, experiment. I would like to talk about uh, our plasmodic Arono bomb. Uh, we address ourselves uh, what will be uh, the scattering effect from a topological uh, defect. We realize topological defect as an annular aperture, and in order uh, to measure the scattering, uh, we interfere it with the plane wave of the surface wave uh, excited from a very uh, narrow uh, nano uh, slit. We measure the interference pattern by using the near field optical microscopy. And as you can see, we obtain a phase dislocation, but a phase dislocation in opposite size uh, between spin up and spin down. We can define here a strange of phase dislocation alpha, which is the number of wave crest ending on the dislocation, where alpha is equal to sigma, which is the orbital angular momentum per photon. So uh, uh, the scattering results in a spin-dependent uh, plasmonic vortex in this case. Uh, we can see the analogy with Arono Bohm effect. In Arono Bohm, we have vectorial, vectorial potential, A proportional to 1 over R. In our case, we have a rotational ray proportional to 1, hour, uh, to one over R. This is a Schrodinger equation uh, for Arono Bohm with the corrected uh, term. And this is our a, a Helmholtz equation with a Coriolis term. The solution here is a momentum shift proportional to A. In our case, this is a spin-dependent momentum shift proportional to omega, and the phase dislocation strange can be calculated by a closed integral. In a run of bomb, it's, is it, it's equal to alpha. Alpha is a flux parameter. In this case, in our case, the phase dislocation say, is a sigma, the incident is spin. So the spin, in our case, behaves as a flux parameter in our runoff uh, bomb effect. So uh, we studied the scattering for a, from a, a topological defect behaves as a plasmonic vortex source. We would like to exploit it for a spin-dependent plasmonics based on interfering of topological defects where the point spread function in our new system is a spin orbit a point spread function which is proportional to ankle function and a spiral phase where the topological charm is a sigma. We realized a... a a plasmonic a chain consisting of a, a topological defects, and we measure the near field to be 
a dark uh, spot, and there is a very good agreement with our calculation uh, based on interference of topo topological uh, defects. We calculated a spiral phase with opposite helicity for spin up, for spin down. Then we realized a plasmonic uh, chain consisting of a topological defect, and we measure here a, a spin-dependent deflection uh, of the plasmonic uh, focal uh, 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 location proportional to the one over the wave number of the surface uh, wave. I would like to talk about a geometric effect in a thermal emission. Uh, Professor Graffe and his group uh, observed coherent thermal emission by coupling a thermal excited surface wave into a radiative uh, wave and we to realize a linear grating upon a silicon carbide. Silicon carbide support surface for non-polariton in the mid-infrared for a thermal emission, and we observed a very narrow spectral peak for the thermal radiation in the mid-infrared in a very narrow observation angle. Then we ask ourselves, what will be the geometric effect for spatially rotating nano aperture, nano structure, where omega is a spatial a rotation rate. In order to, to study it, uh, we form inversion asymmetry lattice. We know for a bas basic physical rule that if we have inversion asymmetry lattice, uh, the dispersion must be spin dependent dispersion. In order to study it, we realized inversion asymmetry a lattice upon a silicon carbon, a comprising of thermal nano antennas where the orientation varies linearly as a function of x. In order to study it, uh, uh, we characterized first the isolated thermal nano antenna, as you can see here. We measured the uh, spectrum uh, for a normal uh, direction, and we observe two localized uh, modes where the polarization of the modes follow the short axis of this nano antenna. There is a very good agreement with our calculation based on a modified long wave, wave uh, wavelength approximation uh, theory. Then we realized a two-dimensional a nano or thermal antenna array in a, a uniform a orientation, and we measure, a, in addition to the local a mode, a very narrow collective mode where the polarization of the collective mode follows the short axis of the nano antenna. Then we measure the wall dispersion relation for the thermal emission, a, which is the omega the frequency as a function of k, as a function of uh, the science of the observation angle in the x direction, and we obtain a slow mode as well as a fast mode, and there is a very good agreement with the momentum matching condition using the reciprocal lattice g and the wave number uh, of the surface for non -polar polariton in this uh, spectrum. Then we fabricated the inversion asymmetry lattice, as you can see here, and we measured the thermal dispersion rela relation. And as you can see here, we measured a splitting of the slow mode. In order to understand it, we measured the, uh, the spectral intensity for a specific observation angle, passed through a circular polarized uh, uh, filters, and we uh, observed one peak for sigma minus and the second one for sigma up. So there is a spin-dependent effect for the thermal emission, for spontaneous emission, and there is a very good agreement with our reflection uh, measurement. The, uh, uh, but here, instead of emission, we have a spin-dependent uh, dips, a spin-dependent absorption. Then we measured the spin-polarized dispersion uh, of this uh, uh, inversion asymmetry lattice, which is a, 
measurement of the third stocks a parameter, and we observe spin split dispersion of the slow mode, spin up and spin down, and there is a spin dependent momentum shift delta k. In order to understand this delta k, we realized a different inversion asymmetry uh, lattices with different rotational uh, rates, and we measured this uh, spin dependent momentum shift uh, to be equal uh, to a sigma omega, where we can conclude that we, uh, we have here a spin dependent uh, uh, dispersion omega uh, with a good agreement with our uh, prediction. It's very nice to see it as an analog analogy with a, a Rushba effect in electronics. In Rushba, there is a gradient of potential. Here we have geometric gradient. We can write the a Schrodinger for Rushba equation with the corrected uh, Miltonian term. And here we have our Helmholtz equation. The solution here is a spin-dependent momentum a shift proportion to gradient of potential. In our uh, case, it's spin-dependent momentum shift proportion to omega. You can see here the observation, experimental observation, uh, which was done by Zaka, uh, spin up and spin down. And this is our uh, sp spin split dispersion. So we named our effect or this effect as the optical uh, Rashba effect. I would like to discuss a little bit about uh, our uh, uh, recent investigation, which we call spin-optical metamaterials. Uh, our inspiration uh, came from antiferromagnetic Kagome lattices. We know that there is a geometric fr frustration, and uh, there are several magnetic moments configuration, uh, such as Q0, which is inversion symmetry lattice, or a square root three, which is inversion asymmetry a lattice. Instead of a using magnetic moments configuration or a spin configuration, a we a used here a localized moon configuration excited a by a nano antenna in a space variant orientation direction. For the inversion symmetry material, we observe spin independent deflection. However, for the inversion asymmetry Kagome lattice, we observe spin-dependent deflection, and you can see here omega as a function of azimuthal angle, and uh, there is very good, good agreement with a basic direction with inversion symmetry evaluation. So we know that from physics, if a parity transformation R to minus R doesn't preserve the local crystal structure, then uh, we will have a spin-dependent uh, a dispersion or spin split a dispersion. We calculated the surface wave, the Bloch modes, by using a vectorial calculation. And uh, you can see here that our structure, uh, consisting of three geometric metamolecules, where the metamolecules excited a, a surface plasmon a vortices with different vorticities. So, there is a relation between the spin symmetry a breaking and the surface waves a orbital angular momentum gradient results in the geometric berry phase, the spin dependent geometric a phase. Uh, currently, we also investigated a spin optic metamaterial for the nanoscale. Uh, uh, you can see here, this is the inversion symmetry structure, and this is the inversion asymmetry uh, structure. I would like to conclude that utilizing the spin orbit interaction mechanism in optical devices may lead to development of a promising new era of research, uh, spin optics, and uh, we hope that we will be able to control light in all optical nanometer scale devices in ways that were impossible uh, before. And uh, uh, we believe that there will be application, spin-based uh, nano-photonic uh, device, light manipulation by spin-optical metastructure, nanomotors uh, for nanoparticles, and, and we, uh, we have a lot of research by, about DNA rotation, and of course, 
a, a, it can be a research platform for spin-based effect in physics, in solid state, uh, and in material uh, science. I would like to finish with Anderson saying that physics is a study of symmetry. Thank you.